Joining me is Dr. Clive Pidel, a co-founder of the National Health Action Party. He's fighting Cameron in his constituency of Whitney, West Oxfordshire, in next May's general election. Welcome, Clive, to Going Underground. So the party manifesto is out next week. Take us through why voters should kick David Cameron out of his own parliamentary seat. Well, absolutely. I mean, he keeps uh, breaking his promises, basically. And one of the biggest promises he's broken uh, was not to dismantle and privatize the NHS. Um, we all know that before the last uh, election, there were promises of no top-down reorganization. Uh, they then got into power with the Liberal Democrats in coalition. The coalition agreement came out, and once again it was stated there would be no top-down privatization. We're not going to privatize the NHS. And within months of being in power, we had this massive piece of legislation, Health and Social Care Bill, which is now the Health and Social Care Act, which uh, came, into, came into power Let's in Let's get on to that in a sec, yeah. but no one can but, argue that um, he hasn't privatized. But as he says at the dispatch box every other week, the Tories did put, the coalition put five billion into the NHS. Where did it go? Well, there's a huge amount of, uh, of waste in the NHS. Uh, on, on the healthcare market, we're trying to find efficiency savings in, in, in the wrong area. We keep cutting services back. But the, there's an elephant in the room, and it's, uh, it's what we call the healthcare market. This is where GPs are buying care from hospitals that are competing against each other. And that introduces massive transaction costs. And it's been estimated anywhere between five and ten billion pounds, which is five to ten percent of the budget, is spent per year. And we argue that this should be abolished, and we should spend that money on frontline care. Okay, maybe it's easier to dismantle the uh, marketisation of the NHS than PFI, which of course the Labour Party spearheaded. So, uh, what what is the solution to PFI? Because aren't we locked in to these uh, hundreds of billions uh, worth of contracts, and there's no way of getting out of them legally? Well, I, I think it depends on the contracts. You know, it, it, it's very complicated. It's difficult. But essentially, uh, our country's bought £11 billion of hospitals and is paying back the financial institutions about £60 billion. And some of those financial institutions, like Royal Bank of Scotland, we actually own. So it's, it's crazy. I mean, our policy would be that if, if there's any question of RBS being reprivatized before there's any question that that happens, it must cancel all the all the PFI debt before before that happens, and, and people then that money trust... can go back into the NHS. I mean, as I say, it was a Labour policy. The PFI. No one should trust Labour on the NHS as to how we can unravel ourselves from this this program. Well, well, that's why we formed the National Health Action Party because we've got a problem with all the main political parties. They've all towed this neoliberal agenda of, of, of the market can solve all our all our problems, and and that and that's why the Labour Party became. New Labour un under Tony Blair, it was a sort of form of, of Thatcherism, really. Um, and uh, we, we, we've, the public has lost trust in, in that model, and that's why we felt we had to come along. Now, the Labour Party do seem to be rowing back a little bit, but they need to row a bit further and a, and a, and a bit faster. Um, uh, just coming back to the PFI, Labour were definitely to blame for massively increasing the amount of PFI. But uh, it was a Tory idea, uh, and, but they just built on it, basically. But that's because they built on the ideas of, 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 of Margaret Thatcher, this you know, free market neoliberal economics. And we still haven't seen the end of that, despite the financial crisis. And I suppose the Green Party, one would expect, to also be supporting the NHS. But UKIP, which does have a disproportionate, I think many people have been seeing a disproportionate amount of airtime on mainstream media, aren't they for the NHS? I've heard the UKIP politicians say that uh, uh, they will guard against uh, privatization of the NHS. Well, UKIP make it up their policy day by day. Uh, all you have to do is look, look at the leadership and what, what they've said. I mean, Nigel Farage just caught out the other day a video of him saying he wants to marketize and pr privatize the NHS, but it wasn't That's an just old him. One. That's an old one, but 2012. But a more recent one is Paul Nettle, uh, who's, who's a deputy leader, uh, has also said the NHS needs to be privatized. And there's a whole range of them. But because it's not a populist policy, they'll lose votes if they say they're going to do that. They're, 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 coming, they're rolling back now, and their manifesto will, will say the opposite. But you can't trust uh, politicians like that that are changing their mind every second just to fit whatever the public perception of them is. I mean, they know they're not going to be the party of government, so they can basically say what they like because they're never going to have to um, make those promises happen. And, uh, of course, when you're knocking on the doors of David Cameron's constituency, I don't know whether the Prime Minister knocks on doors as well ahead of May's election. He probably will. All the parties, all the three major parties, will be saying... We are supporting the NHS. It'll probably be at the top of their... It's the closest we have to a national religion, some people have remarked. Well, so what... Well, absolutely. Well, our argument is if they want to support the NHS, 
uh, they, they, they need to do a number of things. First of all, they have to address the £30 billion funding gap by 2020. None of them have committed to that. We have uh, committed to that. We would say we'd need at least 4% increase in, in funding. None of them have said they're going to get rid of the private finance and, and initiative uh, for good, with the except I'm, I'm talking about the main parties, the Green Party, a completely different picture. Some Labour people are saying it was a mistake. Some Lib Dem They do, but they're, but, 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 but they're not reversing it, and they've not committed to getting rid of the market completely. And although Labour have said they're going to repeal the Health and Social Care Act, what we're actually going to be left with, we get rid of the Tory legislation, but we're left with, with the previous Labour administration's market system still well, in place. What about the commitment for two, Ed Miliband's two and a half billion pound pledge in 2017? Is that just point I mean, it's just, it's just a drop in the ocean in terms of the... It sounds a lot of money, uh, but it isn't a lot of money in terms of the total NHS budget. We need to be increasing by about four billion pounds a year to fill this gap. And it is, we, we spend much less on our healthcare system Actually, than other systems. Actually, that's the same as the fine on the Forex... Uh, well, exchange in two and a half billion. Ab absolutely, anyway. yeah, and we should, we should, we should, that should be coming to us. Um, but no, uh, basically the, the, the sums they're talking about are, you know, they're simply not enough. And, and like I say, compared to other healthcare systems, we don't spend anywhere near as much on, on our healthcare system. And actually, as a share of GDP, spend on the NHS is falling. And what people don't say is actually that, that our population has increased by 4 million from 2008. So per head of population, GDP is falling and, and, and our spend on so NHS spend, per capita is falling as and well. And we spend half as much as comparable countries. So the NHA Action Party, they want the same percentage of uh, Yeah, I mean, I think we, should be, getting, we should be getting up to somewhere near 10% GDP. And our, and our healthcare system would be absolutely fantastic. It's already brilliant the way it can provide for our whole nation. But, you know, it's struggling because it's been underfunded for so long. Long. Okay, but let's this go on historical. To, let's know. get on to the fact that uh, Labour, as you admitted, are changing a little bit in recent months since the NHA Action Party began. TTIP. Uh, I know that we've been covering the possibility of uh, the uh, huge trade deal between the United States and Europe is going to mean the privatization of the NHS. Ed Miliband now saying he wants that not to be included in the TTIP agreement. Yeah, I mean, that's that pretty much, we said that first. We were talking about this about 18 months ago, uh, and actually they've come on board with that. We actually opposed the whole deal because there's just no transparency. It's, it's, it's shocking the way this is all being put through. We just cannot trust the whole trade deal. But can't we and trust Labour because they are making too much power. But in terms of um, Labour exempting the NHS, that is, that is still a good policy. I, you know, from, from, in terms of saving the NHS, that is an important thing to do. Isn't that enough do. then to vote Labour it, in it, it, your it, seat and other it, seats NHA are contested? It, 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 it's still not enough because we're still left with a market system. And in terms of the European legislation, uh, it still leaves the NHS open to you know, getting locked into privatisation and, and irreversible privatisation. And it's a huge problem. I don't want to sound like a you know, mad Ed Miliband supporter, <laughs> but also Labour have been very quick to talk about the privatisation of data. Certainly Labour seems to be saying it, well, it is wrong. What do you think about the uh, selling of patient data which has been happening over the past Well, uh, some of this data has already escaped. We've had this whole care data, you know, problem, almost scandal, really, uh, and uh, patients weren't given an, an, an opt-out, and it wasn't secure to start with. There was, there was not enough, uh, you know, assurance uh, of the public, uh, and it, it created a huge uh, backlash, and they've had to go back to the drawing board. Now, there are a lot of doctors and professional people and researchers that want to get access to data, and they're very much for open data, but it, we need to be much more secure. Because if, if you don't give secure data, and if it's potentially identifiable, there's some very clever people out there that can make this data that you think is unidentifiable, identifiable. It gets into the wrong hands, health insurance companies or even employers. Because if employers have got that information uh, that someone might have a, you know, a, a medical problem, then they, they, they won't employ them. Uh, yeah. And you know that gives them a sort of competitive advantage, uh, you know. And so this is incredibly important information for for, the, for these companies. And we have to look at all of these angles. There are lots of people out there that you know, big data is very important for. Dr. Clive Pidel, thank you. Thank you.